You know, when you go to the Hunter's Hope meeting in person, uh, your emotions go from a one to a 10 and everything in between. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's an amazing uh, meeting. Um, let's go to the next slide. I, the punchline here is um, uh, newborn screening for MLD is certainly possible and will, and will work very well. This is my thinking. Um, so we did a research study. I'm not going to dwell on this. It was published a few years ago on 28,000 de-identified newborn blood spots from the Washington State Lab. We did MLD and CTX together by LC Maspec. The uh, second tier uh, assay was also biochemical. We measured the enzyme activity. Um, for CTX, we, we, we didn't, actually we did have a second tier biomarker that worked well. That's a typo. The reason we don't measure the enzyme activity first is it's of questionable stability in blood spots, especially at elevated temperatures like in Florida or Texas, I think it would be a problem. But I'm not sure it's impossible to do enzyme first. But I think it's I think it's trouble. So we only had two hits out of 28,000. One of them had 8% of residual ARSA and the DNA was our third trick test showed only pseudo deficiencies and the 0% we had one 0% and DNA showed two well known severe pathogenic mutations. So I mean, I think we're certain this kid will develop severe MLD, even though we don't have the identity. We had one CTX hit DNA showed two well known pathogens. So we have one false positive out of 28,000 for MLD and zero false positives for CTX out of 28,000. I think that's pretty good. As good as Krabbe disease with psychosine. And none of these get any better than that. So it works great. Um, I want to just say, in contrast to popular belief, you do not need a prospective pilot study with identified dry blood spots to prove that a newborn screening test works well. Now you need a prospective pilot study if you want to show that you can do follow up and issue treatment and treatment helps the baby, of course. But I don't want to hear again that you need a prospective pilot study to show that a test works. I don't believe that. Now you could say, well, how do we know if we missed any MLD patients? Maybe we had some false negatives. Well, let's see, how do you check for false negatives? Well, I don't know if a patient turns up in the metabolic center in your state and you miss them in the screen, I guess that would be a false negative. But of course, that's not a very reliable uh, criteria. I mean, the patient might not be show up, or they might have moved or they might not get sick for a while or they might not know what's wrong with them for 50 years. So what did we do? We, we took as many newborn blood spots from uh, kids already diagnosed in the clinic with MLD, 17 of them with the help of the MLD Foundation, and we got their newborn blood spots in the states that store them. And we showed that the marker was elevated above our cutoff. So we had zero out of 17, 17 out of 17 would have been caught by this assay. Now you can say we knew ahead of time they had MLD, and I would say, so what? <laughs> you don't believe me? I'm telling you, the data is published. They all had sulfatides above our cutoff. That is the best evidence uh, of no false negatives. There is nothing better than that. Oh, and by the way, if a patient turned up in the clinic who we missed, we would know that because we have the birth dates of all of the de-identified babies in our de-identified blood spot. So we would know just as easily as the prospective pilot by that lousy criteria that, that we had a false negative. Okay, so... Um, are you sure this baby we found has MLD? We haven't seen the baby. I think most clinicians would say yes. Or it's a false positive, and then we would have two out of 28,000 and still looking good. All right, next slide. So worldwide action towards newborn screening from MLD now that we have improved treatments with hemopoietic stem cell transplant combined with lentivirus gene therapy from Orchard. Um, so Archimed, if I'm happy to say in, in Austria is screening live for, uh, they're up to 40,000 babies in, in a few large German hospitals. They're live. Okay. They're, they're, they're doing it for real. Heather Brown in Manchester is gearing up for a pilot in the United Kingdom. 
MLD is one of 14 diseases being tested in a prospective pilot in Screen Plus in New York. I think you know about that. Uh, La Marca in Florence is gearing up for MLD pilot. Uh, Petazoni in Lyon gearing up. And we, we have interest from two or three other labs in Europe. Charlotte Chanson at Orchard is organizing these efforts. We have an MLD New Orange Training Summit uh, in November to talk about all of this. So it's moving fast. Next slide. So, uh, you know, this treatment with Lib Meldi is hemopoietic stem cell transplant with gene therapy. Uh, it's live for approval in, in Europe. Uh, UK just approved the uh, insurance coverage for it. Um, and in the United States, there are four or five cases that have been done out of compassionate use, even though it's not approved by the FDA yet. We think that'll happen soon. So if we start MLD, newborn screening, it'll be important to know as early in life as possible what the prognosis is, you know, late infantile, juvenile, or adult, adult, because it's important to start therapy before significant clinical symptoms arise. This was proven by the published studies from, from uh, the remarkable uh, hospital in, in, in Milan, um, Italy, where they did the gene therapy trials. Dr. Ayuti, Dr. Biffy, Francesca um, Fumagelli, Amazing. Okay, next slide. All right, let's see if we can improve the genotype phenotype correlation from MLD. We need all the ammunition we can get because we're going to try to pull the trigger on, on a bone marrow transplant with gene therapy. It's no picnic, right? Uh, in babies that are kind of asymptomatic. So we have to know a lot about prognosis. And, you know, so we did a large study that we just submitted. Uh, we basically, in a nutshell, we expressed Every variant in Nomad, in ClinVar, in the published literature, about 300 variants, splicite variants, coding variants in human cells that were knocked out for endogenous MLD using CRISPR-Cas9. So they have no MLD. We can easily see the activity above a zero blank. We, we had beta-lactamase, a bacterial enzyme in the, in the DNA, so we could normalize for differential transfection. Uh, so the data is very accurate. Uh, okay, so a lot of work. Next slide. So stage one is we collect the genotype and clinical phenotype from all of the MLD publications and from non-published patient registries from the MLD Foundation. Thank you, Dean and Terrence, sir. So all of the information we can get our hands on, genotype known and phenotype known. We measured the ARSA enzymatic activity of all of these. And we defined four brackets of activity that we came to learn over the course of the study. So severe variant is zero to 2% of wild type activity. Moderate, two to four. Mild, four to 13. Above 13, we call benign. All right, next slide. Now we construct a phenotype matrix, which is pretty simple. So looking at all this data, we notice that essentially every case of infantile MLD, the most severe, we see severe variant slash severe variant, okay? Now, how do we know they're severe? Well, we call them severe because we find them in infantile patients by hypothesis, but they also have very low activity, zero to 2%. But at the end of the day, we hypothesize that everybody with infantile, their mutations are by definition severe in our hypothesis. So now we look at all the clinical cases of juvenile and guess what? We find always one of these on the list of severes as I told you earlier, and one that's not on the list. So obviously that one is less severe, we call it moderate. It worked out really well. Now we have the adults. What do they have? They, two possibilities, they either have moderate one slash moderate two, moderate defined, as I just told you, or they have severe, as I told you, slash something not severe and something not moderate. We call it mild. It's pretty logical. Everybody else is asymptomatic. This is the phenotype matrix that we hypothesize. How well does it work? So if we measure, if we just take the ARSA activity in cells of all the variants we see in the published cases and apply this phenotype matrix, we get the phenotype right in 78% accuracy. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. 
Okay, so it works pretty well, but it's not perfect. Next slide. All right, but we measured the arsenic activity of all of these 300 variants, most of which are not in the literature. And we put them into these severe, moderate, and mild brackets, as I told you. So now if we apply the phenotype matrix, we can predict the global burden of NLD to the extent that we know all the variants in genome, in nomad AD, but we don't, but we know a lot of them. So let's do that. Next slide. And so the published cases of MLD is on the left. You have the, uh, I don't know, a little bit more than half are infantile, about a third are juvenile, and about a one sixth are adult. We predict in the world uh, on the right, it's not too different. We predict a frequency of 1 in 123,000 on the planet. The textbooks would say 1 in 70,000. These are all very rough estimates. So seem to be on the right track. Next slide. So we just submitted this and all of the information on all the variants is provided in convenient lookup tables. And I've sent this as a preprint to pretty much everybody in the field. So nobody's waiting for this. Um, this will surely help with the MLD prognosis, um, but it will never be perfect. I mean, never. I mean, think about it. We have cases where you have two identical twins that have identical genotypes and they both have late onset disease. They're not going to both fall off a cliff, you know, on their 13th and a half birthdays, right? It's not, biology doesn't work that way. It'll never be perfect for late onset diseases. When you compress everything into the early onset period, it becomes more perfect. So we, we, we want to get as much ammunition as possible if we're going to pull the trigger and do a bone marrow transplant with gene therapy on an asymptomatic baby. Okay, that's no picnic. You know, I'm intrigued by a paper that came out 30 years ago where they took fibroblasts from a severe MLD patient and they fed it sulfatide and they measured the rate at which the sulfatide was degraded. And they did that for a juvenile patient and they were degraded at very different rates. This gives me optimism that the rate of sulfatide degradation in cultured skin fibroblasts can predict severity, um, at least help. I think it'll, I'm optimistic. Um, what I like about this is it's not prone to pseudo deficiencies, right? It's, you're measuring the flux of sulfatide in, in the cell in an overall metabolic pathway. And if sulfatide is degraded slowly, it means there's not enough ARSA. All right, so we recently got about 35 fibroblasts from uh, Lyon, France, and from UPMC. We're growing them now. Th these span a range of MLD severities, and we will determine in the next month the rate of sulfatide degradation in these 35, 30, 35 skin fibroblasts. If this works really well to predict prognosis, you know, the plan would be to obtain a skin punch from newborns at high risk to develop MLD, i.e. those that are screen positive. You know, they have high sulfatide, they have low ARSA and concerning genotypes. Yeah, I know this is invasive. You have to do a skin punch, but this is a serious disease. And if we could do this on, you know, 10 patients a year in California, it wouldn't be so bad, would it? I think, I don't know. It's, it's, it's invasive, but not so bad. So this is, this is my hope, to make it as much ammunition as we can to predict phenotype. Next slide. All right, lots of people just quickly, Jessica and Xinying um, did the pilot study and Xinying is now assistant director of biochemical genetics at CHOP. She's amazing. Oh my gosh, she, everything in my lab the last 10 years is from her. Um, Andrea DeBarber and Fred Voss developed the CTX test and we piggybacked it onto the MLD. Wyatt Clark and his colleagues at Biomarin helped with the Gino Fino and um, uh, the Magali and Maria giving us fibroblasts. Dave Whiteman funded our pilot study from Takeda. Charlotte, I mentioned, is organizing the worldwide screening efforts. Dean and Terrence Sir, oh my God, providing access to all the blood spots in newborn screening labs. And, um, and Georgina Morton, she's a parent. Her kid, her daughter was transplanted by the orchard team, uh, doing really well as a teenager. Uh, she is so excited about MLD newborn screening and 
treatment that she started the Archangel Foundation. Uh, Maria Kalfalas, uh Cure MLD Foundation, the second major MLD foundation we have in the United States. Uh, thank these guys and the SIRS for tremendous parent advocacy. And if you haven't seen the Miracle in Omaha MLD video on YouTube, it's a must watch. I show it to everybody. It's an incredible treatment for a serious disease. Thank you.